I, I, I will. All right, so here we have two limit questions. 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. It's the same function, but we want to consider two different limits. One going to, uh, one sending x to infinity, and one sending x to negative infinity. Now what's helpful for solving these questions is, what is e to the negative infinity? As you know, anything to the negative power means 1 over, so this means that. And because e is 2.71a, 2a, 1 something, um, if, if, you, if you just punch in 2.7 and, and multiply by itself many, many times on your calculator, would you be witnessing numbers that increase or decrease? It would be like going bigger and bigger, right? So if you take 2.7 to infinite power, you're going to get infinity at the bottom. And as we said, discussed earlier, 1 divided by infinity will give you 0. And that's, that's very important for our, our discussion. Actually, for this one, this is all you need, right? Uh, this means you're taking 1 plus e to the negative infinity. And since we already figured out that that should be 0, we have 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1 over 1, which is just 1. Now, however, this one is slightly different. This one, you're plugging in negative infinity to negative x, which means it's a negative of negative infinity. X is negative infinity, so if you replace X by negative infinity, you have a negative of negative infinity, which is what? Positive infinity, isn't it? Right. So this is a very, very large number. It goes to positive infinity, right? plus 1. So overall, what do you get in the denominator? Huh? 1 over infinity, and therefore, you get 0. So the limit of the second one is here. Okay. Now, what does that mean for the graph of y equals to 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x? Oh, we'll be doing curve sketching tom tomorrow. We'll start curve sketching tomorrow. So we'll eventually figure out how to draw the graph of this. But for now, let me just draw the graph for you and explain what these two values mean in the graph. Okay. So what you're going to get is that if you plug in 0, that's 1. e to 0 is 1. So 1 over 1 plus 1, that's 1 half. So if I say this is 1, this place is 1 half. And uh, the graph will pass through this point as the y-intercept, and it's going to increase. If you, if you differentiate, you'll see that this graph is always increasing. So it's going to increase, but as it increases, it will get closer and closer to 1. So as it goes to the right, it will get closer and closer to the value of 1. Whereas if you go to ne negative infinity, meaning negative infinity for x is that way, right? So if you go that way, it, it's going to go down, but it will get closer and closer to this. So in other words, if you have the limit as x goes to infinity or to negative infinity, they individually tell you the horizontal asymptote of the graph. If you get a value for any of these, that ends up being, have, giving you a horizontal asymptote. So um, the graph of y equals 1 over 1 plus c e to the negative x, this has two horizontal asymptotes. One, y equal to 1 is 1 horizontal asymptote, and it's the asymptote as the graph extends to the right. Another horizontal asymptote is y equal to 0, and that's the asymptote as you go from the, to the left. Uh, what's interesting is, because you, you can't have more than one value if it did exist for uh, x going to infinity limit, the same for the second one, uh, the most number of horizontal asymptotes you can have for a function is two. You can't have any more than that. Whereas for vertical asymptotes, uh, 
it's uh, any value of x that makes the denominator equal to zero, which doesn't make the top zero. Those are the vertical asymptotes, right? Uh, and uh, because of that, you can have many different, many, many vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes, and also you can have two. 